Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In our projects we often need exact time to trigger events or measure elapsed time. Today I will show you how we can do this in a modern, cheap and very exact way. Of course it runs on the ESP8266. Up till now we had a cheap and simple possibility to get accurate time. We connected a real-time clock or RTC module to our microcontroller and installed one of the readily available libraries. With this method we always had to set the time at least once after the startup of the RTC module. To do this we had to add a possibility to input the time and to display it. Usually this was done with buttons and an LCD display. If our projects needed these devices anyway, this was not a problem. But if not, we had to add space and cost to our project just to set the time once. With our ESP8266 we can avoid all this hardware and replace it with software. Because I did not find a simple library which just gets the actual time in my time zone adjusted to the respective summer or daylight savings time, I built a small library myself that you can use without any hassle. Frequent viewers of my videos know that I used this method in some of my past projects. To get the actual time I used the globally available NTP service. Already in the 70s of the last century, the need to distribute exact time over a network was there and the service was created. Over time, there were a few enhanced implementations of this service and now the service is available for general usage, free of charge and everywhere in the Internet. The service is provided by many different servers around the world and if you query it, you get the actual coordinated universal time also called UTC. UTC is based on the time zone of Greenwich, England. Because of varying network delays, its accuracy is a few milliseconds. But because it is based on atomic clocks and also adjusted to things like leap seconds, which are necessary now and then to adjust it to the actual Earth position, this accuracy will stay also in the future. But how can we call this service? First, we need a network connection. And second, our device has to be able to use the UDP protocol. Then, we send a request to a particular server, or if we want better availability, to a so-called pool, and get a package with a well-defined string back. This string contains a number, which is the number of seconds counted from the 1st of January 1900. This format has to be translated into a normal time format, containing years, months, days, etc. Using our time zone and also adjusted to the daylight saving or summer time. There is another similar format called Unix time format. This format counts the second from 1st of January 1970. Unix time format is widely used and therefore I use this format for all conversions even if it is an additional step. To call the service and do all the conversions and adjustments is not a simple task. This is why I wrote this small library. It is called NTP Time ESP and you find a link below in the description. If you install this library you also find an example file which shows you how to use the service. So let's look at the example code. Of course, we have to first include the library. Second, we have to initialize the NTP project. In this initialization, we have to include the address of the NTP service. As mentioned above, we have two different possibilities. Either use a distinct server or use a server pool. NTP server pools cluster many servers under one name. You find a link to this project in the description. Currently there are nearly 4000 NTP servers live. If you call such a pool name, the chance you get an answer is pretty high. There are many different pools available. 
recommended is that you use the pool which is closest to your location because it will have the smallest network latency. You find a list of all pools if you select your region on the pools homepage. The address is xx.pool.ntp.org. This is the string you fill into the initialization of the service in your sketch. Because I am the guy with the Swiss accent, I use ch.pool.ntp.org and I call my object ntpch. ch stands for Switzerland. In our setup routine, we only have to connect to Wi-Fi. Please insert your credentials here. If we need to know the exact time, we just call our NTP object with the method getNTPTime and the parameters timezone and summertime. The timezone parameter is the difference between your time zone and UTC in hours and if the summertime parameter is 1, the hours are adjusted according to the Western European summertime. The US Daylight Saving Time is not implemented yet. Maybe a viewer sends me a formula for the USA. Then I will adjust the library accordingly. You find the space already prepared in the library. The respective parameter then would be 2 for the US. After this call, the actual time is stored in the structure DateTime and you can print it out with the method printDateTime. How the different variables can be accessed by your own code is shown here. If you are only interested in using the library, you can stop watching now. If you are interested in looking a little behind the scene, you can continue. Behind the scenes is the library. As said before, if we call an NTP server pool with a distinctive message, we get an answer string with the actual time. The calling string is defined by the NTP protocol. I took it from the original Arduino NTP client documentation. The answer string is 48 bytes long and is converted into Unix time format. If you want to know the actual time in Unix time format, you can go to www.unixtimestamp.com. Here you can see the actual time and the corresponding Unix timestamp. You can also convert any date to Unix time and back. By the way, the time since 1970 is called Epoch. Because of the 32-bit format of this number, it will only last till January 19, 2038. After that, a new Epoch will start and our applications will have a similar problem as we had in the year 2000. But I'm sure this problem will be solved till then. Because NTP time servers only deliver the time in UTC, we have to adjust the response to our time zone and also adjust it to the summer or daylight saving time. This is done by the methods adjust time zone and summer time. As said before, the method daylight saving time is not implemented yet. At the end, we convert the timestamp with the adjusted time to our structure, which is then returned to the calling program. Summarized, we replaced an RTC module including backup battery, entry keys and display with a small piece of software. We used the globally available NTP services and in order to enhance reliability, we used server pools instead of individual servers. Because time is used in many projects, I wrote a small library which can be easily used in your own sketch. The library is available on my GitHub. In one of the next episodes, we will use this library to create a sketch which is called every day once at the exact same time. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.